I get a little rain man with packing. Okay. Like I'll okay. pack and then check it again. Yeah, I'm and like And then that. a third time. But my wife never has to worry. She doesn't worry about any of that shit because mm-hmm. she knows I've checked it five times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like right. I'm, I'm the one who makes the travel plans. She's just like, let's just go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll find a hotel. We won't find no, a hotel. No, no, it's yeah, yeah. New Year's Eve. We're not going to find a hotel. I'm like that. Yes, we will. It'll come to us. <laughs> that's what they say makes the perfect couples. If there's well, that's one exactly person who's yeah. casual about everything. Well, that's absolutely. Person, I think that's just, how we I am gotta with be my... There. We got to go yep. do this. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Stand By with JJ and Francisco. I'm JJ. This is Francisco. We got a really fun episode today because we are joined by the voice of Goku and Dragon Ball Z, uh, talented stand up comedian, actor, and voice actor. Here is Peter Kalamis, ladies and gentlemen. Hello, everybody. Thanks for having me, guys. No, Appreciate thanks it. for coming. Thanks for coming. By the yeah. way, I just wanted to say, like, I don't think you need to. I mean, obviously, you're JJ and I'm Francisco. <laughs> Are you like, I, I, do you think it's I mean, I think it's pretty obvious. obvious. Yeah, like even if people don't know you, like hey, if they go like, which one is JJ? And which one is Francisco? <laughs> you I think, think it's done? You think it's? I mean, it's pretty obvious? obvious. I don't think nobody's gonna go with me, JJ. Right. And like if you were at a restaurant and the meals were coming, uh, yes. I go, I have something for Francisco. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Well, well, I'm not gonna die him. on that hill. Yeah, yeah, I'm not gonna die. I will accept that. No, I mean, I'm not sorry. Hey, my my parents were people of the world. They might have wanted to name me Francisco. True, but I mean. That's I mean, a, maybe I mean, a funny episode of something. It's not it. likely. That <laughs> to be name. fair, you could still be a JJ. I mean, I could, but yeah, but, yeah, but like in real JJ, life now. So. <laughs> I mean, in a show, I in could. Reality. But, not. but thank right, you for okay. coming. Sorry. Just <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Well, this is a man who's, yeah. been, who's had many names. I know. I mean, I mean, his voiceover credits are just... I was reading your uh, Wikipedia page. You have a lot right. of them. I mean, right, right. and... Uh, it's amazing because I I did voiceover, but like cool. I mean I've done voiceover, but nothing like like you have. Like yeah. I think I got lucky. Like I got like a couple of things just because okay. the the way I sound. But I think you like yeah. I wanted to like. Are you like? Uh, did you take uh, like? Did you learn this? Uh, did you like as a profession, or you did it by yourself, or like? You know what? I, was... I, I grew up uh, fascinated with uh, comedy in general. Yeah, but. I remember watching like Monty Python when yeah. I was a kid, which is really big in Canada. And a lot of the British shows were really big in Canada growing up. And I used to turn on like a tape recorder and imitate the voices uh. that they did. And then growing up watching like Carol Burnett and Rich Little and all these people. And I was fascinated by voices and stuff growing It was just a fascination. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Any character thing that sounded different, looked different. Tim Conway uh, becoming yeah. you know, the old guy. And it's all of that shit was so fascinating to me. Uh, I just couldn't get enough of it, so I, wow. it was so, just a sponge from when I was a kid. I that's think. great. So that's a thing because I, I read that you also can I just f- chime in and go? I've done voiceover too. Well, what? <laughs> I just I just wanted to brag. On what? I'm a I'm a voice of in Hot Wheels City. I'm in Hot Wheels City. We've got over a million views on YouTube. Oh, okay. What do, what do you do? Yeah. So of what? I'm I'm I'm, I'm Elliot. Far? I'm one. Of, they're like the Dukes of Hazard. Uh, anyway, yeah, this yeah. is yeah. Just, yeah, uh, but well, I just want to say, oh, thanks for a million uh, views. Man. Thanks for that, 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 that. Million Thank views. You. Shake million your head, million views. So off there, just bragging to our guests. <laughs> I mean, well, know? I mean, he's got so. like uh, actual like credit. <laughs> I know. He, sorry, he sure does. JJ. And I'm sorry that I only listed one. I only listed Dragon Ball Z it, at the top, and okay. we didn't rattle through them. But actually, uh, the the funny thing about our relationship is that it it actually dates back to uh, a poker game. We met initially at a poker game. Oh, yeah. Uh, about ten years ago, mm-hmm. and then we like shared rounders? a flight. Like uh, where, like where you like rounders? Like the right no, it was it was a comic, so it was like uh, a two dollar yeah. max. Oh, got it, got it. <laughs> we got it. Let's be clear here. Nobody lost their rent. Well, some of them did. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They lose twenty bucks. That's gonna that's hurt. That's it for a right? comic. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. a lot. But it was quite uh, funny timing in that. And then we ended up sharing a flight together. I, and we can't remember if it was Toronto to Vancouver or L- yeah. L.A. to Vancouver. But it was. But I feel Vancouver was the destination. Yeah. I think so. In the flight. Because that's also where you live. Uh, or you have yeah. like. You, yeah. you but, live here and you live yeah, in. Yeah, Canadian. Uh, but uh, have a place here. So, so, so it was a lovely little back-to-back meeting. And then and at the time you were recording. Uh, or or actually it was just being released. Stargate Universe was just right. being released. Right. And uh, so that's how I placed it about 10 years ago, I would yeah. say. Yeah. And I managed to binge it and everything, and then uh, we became internet friends. And uh, 
That's and great. since then, he's gone on to voice many other things, yeah, which I which I assume is what you were just doing this morning in L.A. I was you were... uh, recording this morning, yeah. Oh, right wow. On. Nice. Yeah. And is it anything that you're allowed to tell us about, or are you still he... under an NDA? Well, it's a character that I did on a, on a show called Dragon Prince, and uh, well, what I'm supposed to say, there's not, but the character is coming back for a... a I won't say how long or in now, what now, capacity. Right. Now you reveal it, and the character no, gets no, no. killed yeah. off. So, but, all of a sudden. but the character's funny because he's a, he's a pirate, but he has uh, two eye patches. Oh, so that's right. Right. that's yeah. funny. So I thought you were gonna do. Guy. I thought you were here just to record uh, the commercials for Pollo Loco, because <laughs> uh, <laughs> you can do the great voice. Because I saw some of your stand up, and you had like one the of, Pollo Loco, like Pollo Loco. Once, bit, once I had a voice audition, it was for Pollo Loco. Oh, really? And, and I, I didn't get it, and I was like, maybe they know. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> Taking the piss out of him like fun. every week. Yeah. Yeah, they, yeah. They maybe watch. they know. <laughs> Which is very funny. I yeah, I, yeah, I love that routine as well. Uh, yeah, everybody, flock, flock to YouTube and check out some of Peter's stand-up. This is the what we're referring to. Which I, I believe, well, I mean, I've seen you perform it in Canada. Yeah. Um. So I don't know what other versions are out there, but yeah, fa fantastic routine. Which Thanks. is which Thanks. we're going to assume is how you first got discovered, and then. Were you Tor a Toronto-based comedian at that point in your career, or were you always uh, West Coast? No, always Vancouver. Always I, Vancouver I got out to based. Toronto a few times after I started headlining, and it was my kind of my when you're. This is a travel show, right? Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, well, I was going to say this made you no can sense. talk about whatever. Hitting in, it made no yeah, sense yeah, to me. Yeah. It's like, uh, hey, it's a travel show set in a comedy club. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? that? Next week is like right. a library going to talk about abortion. Yeah, I don't yeah, know yeah. What yeah. The connection, the I connection mean, you is. Can, you can make, roll with it. Yeah, yeah you can talk about anything, talk about anything. And then Any, at the end, just say like, and I travel. And I traveled. Yeah, yeah. Any excuse. That's that was my my parents never traveled growing up. I mean, right? They were Greek. So they oh. were scared of travel. Oh, really? All the okay. Greeks, they, pa right. they pack up together in a small neighborhood, and that's it. They don't go so anywhere, movie... except back to the homeland. They go back to the homeland oh, like every it. summer or two to right. the small village that they escaped from. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they they flock back, and uh, and then they go back to wherever they live. <laughs> so that's what they did. So for me, getting into stand-up was great because I did get to travel, Yeah. go to these uh, places and cities that I'd never been to before. Some of them you would never want to go back to, but- <laughs> Sometimes you know you when you hop in a car and you do these early on in your career is a lot of driving to really shitty gigs and yeah, but still I got to travel and you know it was it was really cool. Yeah, that's the kind of freedom you get at the so th you know stand up comedy career. And yeah. then you were like, because I obviously you mentioned before that you started so early because you wanted to do this on, since because I saw, I read that you you had your first stand up in fourth grade or something like that yeah, or like yeah you did which read is, up. yeah which is <laughs> it was, uh, which is crazy I mean like. Fourth grade, I was trying. I mean, I don't know what the hell I was trying to do. I was like, like trying not to get beat up or be. I don't know, like just doing like normal. But kid that's stuff. exactly how stand up skills start. You're trying not True. to get beat up. So exactly. You're trying well, to exactly. or I was doing right the, the beat. I mean, either the, I think I was a little bully when I was in Venezuela, and then I moved to the U.S. And oh then, wow! And you're, then they started you're bullying me. You're a reformed me. asshole. Yeah, yeah. I re I, I realized even, when I, I got here. I wouldn't even thought that of you. You're such a nice guy. I wouldn't have, it's I wouldn't pretty have obvious. thought that you came from, <laughs> came from me. I mean, I wasn't like crazy, like, 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 like bully stuff. I mean, <laughs> El Francisco Loco. Well, one kid did have to, <laughs> El, El, yeah. One kid did have to change schools. But it wasn't because of me. It was, it was the whole class. So. Hey, all it I was. did was pull his pants down and then nah, everything nah, else nah. was out yeah, of my yeah, hands. Ears. Yeah, ears. <laughs> but. Anyways, uh, but you started. So f how does that? Like, I mean, like, how does? Uh, I mean, first of all, how was the the set? That was your first set. So like, it was in the classroom at school, and I always was joking around, a jokester. Yeah. And the teacher, if I remember her name correctly, I think it was Mrs. Chilton, and she had. I don't know whether she was like from Transylvania or something, <laughs> but she had this. Tr of what I remember, this Transylvanian type accent. And she, big nails, big hair, and a bun <laughs> with a thick accent like this, <laughs> and, and and this big medallion in the corner that was just <laughs> way too large, like it was enormous. <laughs> and then at the, at the last day or two of school, where you don't do any work, you just they're ready to send you off to the summer yeah. vacation kind of thing. She goes, "Well, what do you want to tell some jokes?" I was like, "Yeah." So we had oh, cake, nice. and then I went up and did a set, and oh, then wow. killed, wow, killed, wow. imitating her in front of her. Oh, really? And she loved it. <laughs> oh, that's uh, awesome. So it could have gone either way, but yeah. I, uh, but that oh, was my great. first set, and I was like, "And you come even." In, I think we all remember our first set, whether it was good or great or medium, whatever. 
but you, I came out of that going, this is, this yeah, is, this is, I, like, you had that, right. like, you gave you that rush. Yeah. Yeah. Even at that age, it was like, that was adrenaline. Yeah. Just no, that's amazing, because 12 years ago, like, I think knowing what you know so early, that's, to me, that's a gift, you know, like, because yeah. I found out I wanted to do this, like, after I graduated from college and university, right. so I was like, that's one thing that I realized, but I think knowing it so early, it's always yeah. like, such a, like, a gift to know, like, this is what I want to do, you know? Yeah. Like, yeah. And and like, well, especially to have that first one under your belt. Because I knew early, I always wanted to be a stand-up comedian. I definitely knew all my life, but I didn't have any kind of grade four, grade five, like, then right. I got up and talked yeah. shit, and it, it worked, and I knew. Yeah. So I had to wait till after university, but I always wanted to do that. Okay. So, yeah, you're right. that If you if you just crush it early on, you do an early performance, you're like, this well, is what I'm Well, it was grade four, and then the next <laughs> set was, like, in university. So it was, was a big, <laughs> but, but the oh, whole took, my time. The whole time. The second right. set. You wanted to melt that that, that that big that set. It's, like, it's a whole ten yeah, years. It's back a whole ten years great. of going, ah, yep. oh, this is, yeah, I'm yep. going to revisit that, man. But for me, it, it, uh, a comedy club in Vancouver, Punchlines Comedy Club, which no longer exists, but they used to send comedians to do this lunch hour uh, set mm -hmm. for like a half an hour and then they would invite people come up to tell a joke and you'd win 25 15 or 10 dollars telling a joke oh, so wow. i went up once and told one like 15 bucks and then that's it i would go uh, back i think they would come every every other week uh every other wednesday yeah and then i would start writing material so they'd say come up uh, tell a joke and i would start doing bits mm. and the, the mcs were always from the club and a couple of them said look you got material you should come down amateur night and and give it a mm, shot. So nice. I finally did. And by the time I got to amateur, I'd had a good ten minutes of yeah. stuff that was kind of working. And then, and it, so did, it was it a bit of a, it was a nice start. The... It was a nice start, a gentle yeah. start into because <laughs> yeah. if you sometimes you, you head into a club, especially I found the East Coast guys a lot nastier than the West Coast guys. Yeah. I don't, maybe it's just I, me. I don't well, know. Oh, really? Depends what club you're at, I guess. Yeah. But for me, it was just much more cutthroat there. They were yeah. never mean to me, but they were there was much more cutthroat. Yes. Uh, yeah, right. Cutthroat kind of attitude. So I, I got introduced very gently nice and uh, so like you start you said so you're from vancouver and then did you uh was so when you started doing stand-up what was your like your first big move did you have to like travel somewhere like or like or did you move somewhere to no i continue uh, with the career or you always no, stayed, I stayed in it? vancouver because the, the stand-up led into uh voice work and, okay and then when we used to do shows uh that's when the film industry in Vancouver was really starting to take off. Mm -hmm. So a lot of casting directors would come to the shows oh. and, and look for right. comics Local specifically talent. to, to uh, audition for commercials initially. But then it would kind of grow in, once they, if you were doing well enough, it would branch uh, into other things. Nice. And then we'd have different celebrities coming to the club. Like I remember I got to improvise with uh, Robin Williams oh, wow. twice. Oh, how was that? It was amazing. I mean, like that. first time I was so nervous, um, too nervous. <laughs> I, I, it was kind of like I had the best seat in the house because I was on stage with him. That, well, that's how yeah, I yeah, described yeah, it afterwards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And he's such a force of I mean, I Well, it's least... just a million miles an hour, and you're yes. trying to keep up, and you're nervous, and you're starstruck yeah. at the same time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but the second set, I kind of – those nerves kind of had passed. Nice. And then I uh, I had a really good show with oh, him. And wow. we, we, we – So the show was you uh, and him just back and no, forth? No, it was like four improvisers. He, oh, okay. he joined us oh, for nice. that night, right? Nice. And I remember uh, it went really good, and I was, you know, when you're throwing out ideas and you're rolling with it, it just it was really clicking. Yeah. And then afterwards, backstage, he, he just came up to me and he goes, "Oh, you're very funny." Uh, <laughs> and I was like, awesome. and to this day, I can hear those no, words come out of uh, Rob Williams' mouth. You know? No, so it's, 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 it's amazing. I, I, he, I, I saw the uh, only time I saw him was when I, when I used to work here at the, as a door guy at the comedy store. Yeah. And he came uh, on a Sunday n uh, night, which was like potluck, which only the, the yeah. people that, yeah. you know, and yeah. then. Um, and he went up and uh and yeah i think he went up and did like 20 or 25 minutes uh of stand up and he was he did in those minutes, he did like 40 characters yeah. he was just like yeah yeah that 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 back and forth back. i mean i was like impressed i was like wow this is like just like such yeah. a nat like natural yeah. thing that you're born with i don't know like how just going back and then and he was really nice he took a picture i took a picture nice. with him at the end you know stuff like that so, so yeah, one, i could imagine just being with him that yeah. performing yeah. with him at yeah. one point, I, I had been uh, hired to teach this comedy class at the at the club, and it was this eight week course, <clears throat> and then we'd had this graduation night yeah. at the end where, and it was people from all sorts of uh, lines of work, like a real estate agent, a college right. student, yeah. and some of them. One woman there was there because she had been sexually assaulted by her oh, dentist, wow. oh, and her psychologist oh, wow. said, 
I want you to try stand up and to, wow. to so overcome like, yeah, whatever like, he like thought she needed to overcome. Outward but bound is, kind of rehabilitation it, it the, style. No, the cross thing. section of students were unbelievable. One of our students, Seth Rogen, taught Seth Rogen, right? You taught Seth Rogen? Yeah. Oh, so, wow. so, I mean, the, this is the cross section. It was all over the place. Wow. Yeah, yeah. So, after eight weeks, we had this graduation night where they all had five minutes and they would bring friends and family in. Yes. So, the, the club is it packed. Was this improv or stand up? Stand up. Oh, okay. I did a so the, similar club yeah. that one improv, yeah. So the, the the club is jammed, jammed, and everybody's going a little bit over time. Like, it's, you know, that's her first time I see it. But everything's going great. Everybody's killing. Everybody's great. And the owner of the club runs out to me and he goes, uh, okay, you got to fire these guys through. Robin showed up. He's filming a movie. He was filming Jumanji at the oh, time. Oh, wow. He goes, he wants to go up. Oh. And, uh, and I was like, look, I, I can. I don't want to tell them that he's here because it's going to freak, freak him out. out. Yeah. So I just said, hey, everybody, just try to stick to your time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and there was still, it took another hour and he uh, stuck around. Wow. Right? And this uh, is after you did the improv? I'd already improvised with okay, him. Okay, so this you point. knew yeah, him a little so bit. So I knew him a little bit. Yeah. Um, but he stuck around. And at the very end, the show was already like two hours, right? Yeah. The crowd's tired. So then I got up and I go, yeah, okay, what am I going to do for an intro for him? Because I mean, what do you, you yeah you just say yeah. his name and have everybody cook. there's you this know. amateur backstage this is what, I, wants to this do is what I did as you guys are filing out this is what I did I just go listen it's been a long night we had this one student who had to leave the course halfway through for some family reasons I don't think he's ready but if you guys wouldn't mind indulging like one more person That's for great. graduation and they're like uh, <laughs> And I go, uh, and his name is, uh, you know, I'm fucking searching for the name, yeah. uh, Ro 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 Robin Williams. <laughs> and the curtain opened, and he came out, and I swear to God, there was about three solid seconds of complete silence. People realize, silence. yeah, yeah. Like they looked. <laughs> it, oh my they God. couldn't believe. Yeah. That is this a he TV did, monitor? <laughs> they couldn't believe, and then it was a, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. It was almost like angry clapping, like they were so <laughs> excited. <laughs> and they on their feet, standing ovation oh, wow. for like two minutes before he could even start. Of He's course. like, oh, no, please, please, please. And then he did an hour. Oh, wow. And then it hit the newspapers the next day, and then people started lining up at the club at like 4 p.m. for the next two weeks. Wow. To wow. Never to be seen again. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah, the following improv night, the following Wednesday, everybody was like, oh, it's going to come down. They were lined up at 3 Jeez. And he didn't show up. Wow. So the next weekend, or that's the next, gonna be the a thing Wednesday, for improv people. Of like, yeah. can you give me a suggestion? Bring Robin Williams <laughs> out. <laughs> <That was pretty laughs> like, no, you can, not. He's not there, and you just try to get through the show because you know they're all pissed off. Yeah. Anyways, so uh, he didn't show up, and then the following uh, Wednesday, he did show up, and we're like, oh, you didn't show up uh, last week. He goes, well, I was in a cab, I drove past, saw the lineup, and kept too going. much. <laughs> yeah, wow. he, didn't, he didn't want that much attention. That to much. It, so, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. So he would drop by even now and then for that's you know, after awesome. Jumanji that's filming a really and cool story. And drop in. That's amazing. That's, that's pretty I mean, sweet. That's pretty cool. I mean, so you got, and did he remember you like uh, when you introduced him or whatever? He, you know? he I, I like, believe hey, he did. I believe he did. We had a quick conversation nice. about it. And then he used to drop by the Urban Well, which yeah. was a, a Tuesday night show that was ongoing. A lot of celebrities, when they would come into town, would do spots. Sarah got Silverman it. and ah. all sorts of people. And it was a really good, and he used to dr uh, drop in there too. Nice. Hanging out with it. And he was always, like you said, he's very nice. He was always, Everybody wanted his photo, and I never saw him turn anybody down. No, it was no, always no. like, "Oh, sure," yeah, because he knew for them it's for him it's the hundredth, two hundredth photo of the of night, of course. But for them, it's, it's a one-time time time photo ever, that, that yeah. in their life they will mm -hmm. never forget. Yes. You know? so yeah, yeah, um, he was a valuable guy. Yeah, man. absolutely, he was, he was amazing. No, nah, it was yeah, he was uh, no. uh, talent, you know, iconic talent. Yeah. You know? Oh, yeah. He's one of those guys that you felt the hue around him when he was around yeah. as well. You're like, mm -hmm. there's some magic coming off this man. Sure. It's just uh, yeah. yeah. But you yeah. probably get that at a lot of the cons too, right? Like uh, the people are like, oh, my God, it's, it, it's I, Peter. Uh, I do, and it and it's, uh, you know. The, by the way, the cons, you mean the conference? Yeah, the Comic-Con. Yeah, the Comic-Con. Because yeah, yeah, comic I think guys. people like, I don't know if people. The convicts. Like, he's yes. really <laughs> popular with yeah. convicts. When he goes, and, uh, his, when he yeah. goes to prison, man, yeah. he's a popular guy. Yeah. You're, no, you're right. At conventions, uh, I've had people come up, and again because of the character, like you were saying, yeah, you, you grew up with a lot of watching these of particular course. characters, yeah. and it may, means our, a lot to a lot of people. Our yeah. producer Brian here is a uh, is fan. He's, he's holding on to the fanboyness. Yeah, of but, course, uh, he's uh, he grew up on Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> Dragon Ball Z, yeah. Ed, Ed, maybe, he's, maybe he's maybe he's trying a, to say like, remember you took a, I took a picture with you, and you don't remember who I am. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I think this is how he's trying to like say <laughs> that would be it. Hilarious. Like, <laughs> remember me? You remember oh. me? You turned down my picture, not yeah, like Robin Williams. I even, I even know you from more obscure like uh, uh, X Files. <laughs> X Files, yeah, X, yeah. You did, which is one of my favorite shows of all time. X Files and weirdly Psych. 
Psych, Another yeah. one of my, huh. I'm yeah. a huge fanboy of Psych. <laughs> Brian, so, do you, Brian, do you have a question for Peter that you want to sit here and ask him? Yeah, like, I'll just like, join you guys. You like, like, no, 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 it's fine. Over and ask no, no, no. But no. You're, you're saying about the cons, and, it, and yeah. again, some people come up to the table, and I've had people like cry at the really? table, like because they wow. get emotional because they say they used to, they grew up watching Dragon Ball Z with their dad, who's no wow. longer around. So there's yeah. all these really emotional connections to that's cool the, the characters and. I mean, you can't you don't you can't do any, take any credit for it. It's a job, and you're yes. paid to do a voice, and it's and it's great that people still connect, enjoy like it, that, and connect yeah. to it. And yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, they haven't announced it yet. I'm going to do it anyways, but I'm going to be at LA Comic Con. I got an invite, so I'm going nice. to be there. Right on. When is table, it? December third to fifth. December three, four, five. Oh, that's nice. Oh, nice. Yeah. So perfect. Yeah. So we'll be there with a table, set, you know, bringing all this memorabilia and stuff, and and that's doing awesome. signings and and stuff like that. But that, those are always I always enjoy those things. Amazing. When yeah. you when you do those things, um, what is like? So what's the craziest thing that so that a fan would come up and go, "Well, you, you sign, sign this, this." You know, are we? There's uh, one called Kamea Con, and that's just a Dragon Ball Z dedicated convention that happens in Dallas every year. Yeah. And uh, the last one we were at, um. My buddy who voiced Vegeta, Brian Drummond, we had a table beside each other, and some guy comes up and he with a full size VCR, the, you know, like <laughs> the full double like the brick original, size. Yeah. yeah. The tape out. <laughs> so this is it. Oh, really? This is it. <laughs> so he goes, "Oh, you got to look inside." He goes, "I'm like, what?" He goes, "And you push the flap in, and there's Dragon Ball Z and Cell <laughs> Ten on a homemade tape that wow. they played so much it got stuck, oh. and they kept the whole VCR. Wow. And he brought the whole thing in. Oh, so wow. we signed the VCR with the tape still inside. Oh, and he's like, yeah. And he's oh, like, man. he was so happy That's to be going. That's fantastic. So that was the weirdest kind of thing that, that we had signed. That is funny. That's, That's fantastic. Hilarious. I guess he was holding that up. Look at yeah. this. Yeah. <laughs> was like, what the fuck? What, what, what are you, <laughs> you got him to sign a VCR? Yeah, sign a VCR. That's and dedication. also, if he's traveling, is he checking that? Or is that carrying <laughs> yeah, on? Like, I don't know. He's already got to check it. He's like, no, I got to bring it in my lab because it's precious. You know what I mean? I don't know. Right. Yeah. This is a, that's so cool. I mean, I think I uh, I've I mean, I haven't gotten to the, the, the level of have you gotten of feeling that. But I think that's really cool when you you really when people really connect with that and really like you see how they, right. you know, really yeah. affected them yeah. in a positive way yeah. that you're like, I've like never... you said, it's like, yeah, I mean, it's a job and you, you got hired to do it, but it's still you had you were part of it. So, yeah. it's, I mean, it's kind of cool to. To you know, have all these people be like, "Hey, you," right. like you said, like I watch this with my dad, and now like it's so important exactly. to me, which is I, I think that'd be that's that's cool, you know. Super like last cool. like last week we were at a uh, we were at um, oh god, not Katsuya, but what's the name of the restaurant? Uh, it, it's the sugar it's like, fish. No, no, it's uh, it's one where they cook in front of you, but it's not at Benihana. It's another one in in Encino. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, but, but. Anyways, and well, you're not getting Benny a free Hanna? commercial. Yeah, no, I, 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 the name escapes me right now. But we were there, and there was this. Uh, there were three people there, and and then just me and my wife and our daughter. Yeah, right? and that was it because you know, COVID and it was a limited seating. Yeah, and all this stuff. so we do the whole thing, and the guys, you know, we're briefly chatting, being polite to each other, and all. And how I don't know how we came up at the end of the lunch where my wife was like, "Oh, have you what cart?" Because it's asking about cartoons. I don't know how it came up, and she goes, "Oh, what cartoons you're watching?" He goes, "Oh, Ed and Ed, Ed, Ed and Eddie and stuff." And I just went, oh, hello, Ed Boy. And he, li he literally oh. like jumped out of his seat going, wow. are you kidding me? Oh, man. And it's like, well, you never know who's watched of it or course. Yeah, enjoyed it. Or and the or impact whatever. that that And the impact, yeah. yeah like yeah, saying yeah. it, like, again, the memories kind of foot. Yeah, yeah. Like, just fire, fire back. That's awesome. So that's cool. Yeah, because after shows, all I get was like, hey, yeah. You should keep trying. <laughs> like, Comedy's wow. hard for everybody. Or they, or they, or no, they, they, they always do that. It was like, yeah, you should, you're good. You should do this. I was yeah. like, I'm doing uh, it. Yeah, this is, this is my, this I'm is, getting paid for this. this I'm a professional stand-up comic. Or like, or like, or like too. I hope you make it someday. Yeah. Well, this is being a stand-up no, comedian. Uh, or you're there and it's like, you know, the opener, the middle, and the headliner, and they yeah. come up and you're like, you're, you've are you been emceeing, and you're like the headliner. You're hilarious. Yeah. You're really good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Have yeah. a good night. I'm trying. What the hell? Yeah. Or they like, you're effort? amazing. You're great. Uh, uh, you too. Yeah, you too. Yeah, like, yeah, it's like, yeah, whatever. Or there's the, I can never do what you do. That's the, uh, that's yeah, another yeah. Passive, <laughs> passive kind of aggressive. Have you guys like, ever gotten, oh. like, when the, after you're done, the host comes up and they go, you know, comedy's hard, people. Like the, they're saying to the audience, like it's hard. It's a, he, you know he didn't yeah, do great, yeah. but it's uh, well I did for you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I did do that when I was uh, working here, and I would host the potluck. I, sometimes yeah. I would host the potluck, and this guy came and like he brought all his friends, 
And at that point, there wasn't that many people. So it was basically just a, a show for a, him. Just for him. Yeah. And he went up and like, and yeah, he didn't do good. I mean, he was on open <laughs> mic or stuff like that. And I when I went up, I was like, well, you see how guy, you see how comedy it is that even your friends and family don't laugh at you. Like, <laughs> you see how hard it is. Damn. No, because I was no, but I was trying to say of like, like you cannot make you can't force people to laugh. You no. know, and even no, like, no, no. and especially when they're friends and family, they're even more nervous for you. So they won't laugh if you're if you're struggling. So it's like, but my mom was like, you see how hard it is that like, because yeah. you know if it's somebody that plays a piano or sings, even if they suck. You know, as an audience member, you can just be like, ah, you know, right. you don't show it. But like right. with yeah. stand up, it's like literally like and it's it's hard to you can't force people to laugh. I know? always I always like to do the opposite. I actually did this to you last week. I watched you rip the shit out of the gig here. And then when you, but I like when my friends come off with all that confidence, I always like to go, you'll get them next time. <laughs> I, always, I did that to you last week. And that's, yeah. that comes out every time. So now everybody knows that. But yes, that's that's what you're going to get. Yeah, but I'm too better luck. That shit. Better luck. You get them next time. Yeah, yeah. You get them. <laughs> um, hey, but so you spend your time. Like, cause we're, we feel really lucky to get you while you're in Los Angeles. Cause we know you're splitting, you split your time a lot these days between yeah. Vancouver and LA, right. don't you? Like, yes. and, and, and is that just based around work or do you, you and your missus go, no, let's, let's have some time off. A, a little, a little based bit of on both. health care. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> so there's a good, that's a good so like, it's I would do the same thing. <laughs> it's a little bit of both. That's a, yeah. yeah my, my heart's palpitating. Let's yeah, go back to Canada. To limp back to Vancouver. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's very funny, man. Um, yeah, so sorry. It's, yeah, generally based on work, but overall, right. I, overall, are you spending more time these days in LA or? Yeah, well, last year and a half or two years have been it's um, it's kind of impossible to gauge because film industry kind of you know almost shut down for like a good eight or nine right. months yeah. yeah when this uh, pandemic hit in what uh, March of 2020 and then there was nothing there was okay. nothing yeah, yeah. so we spent yeah. a, a good chunk of time in, in Vancouver then close to family close to friends and all that stuff because it was just yeah. too crazy mm -hmm. so in that time I mean we're, we're we're getting down here more often but um Right on. It's been, yeah, it is. It's just, yeah, you're chasing work. Nice. Yeah. And, and outside of that commute, uh, Vancouver, LA, like how often do you say, are you firing out east? Because you're doing all these Comic Con conventions and stuff. Right. And, but does that keep your like travel schedule busy for going to the rest of North America? Or I, have, I don't generally... do nearly as much stand up as I used to do. Like it's pretty right. limited now. I want to do, I want actually want to do more. I did a, a few sets when I was in Vancouver last time. And when I, roll back into it a little a little more now mm. right I, yeah. I want to go back to because you said that you didn't travel with your family uh, you you know because uh, they're greeks they don't travel as much and yeah. uh so there was no first of all two questions there was no travel at all like or uh, with your family when you're growing up and also now that you have your daughter do you are you traveling with her or do you do or is there any particular like vacations that you go to or that you have gone to you know with your yeah, family do you just yeah. go, I'm, I'm taking her to san diego comic-con and she can entertain herself <laughs> <laughs> yeah no we we do like to travel and, and with the convention sometimes you get uh you know a really cool perk like i uh i had a convention in the uk uh like three years ago about three years ago yeah so i said well this is the time why don't we fly into it sounds so Posh, you know, we're going to fly into Paris. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So we flew into Paris and, you know, we took our daughter up the Eiffel Tower and got oh. these amazing pictures of her with her, got a little pink beret. And, nice. And then, you know, we hung out in Paris for a couple of days, which I had never been to. My mm -hmm. wife had never been to. So it was incredible. And then took the the channel, which they, they yeah. hated, you call it that, but the the yeah. undersea train into <laughs> London. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, went to the convention after that. And, and I'm glad we did it because, I mean, the world locked down for essentially two years and counting yeah. after that. So we got to do this incredible uh, trip. That's awesome. So yeah, but she's been, my wife counted, I think she's been on like, if you count every single flight, like it sometimes you have to connect, but if you count flights, I think she's at about 80 flights. Oh, she's wow. like 12. Wow. So she's, yeah. oh, wow. and she's like well versed in it now. She's like, okay, she we're, knows how we're to on a plane do it. tomorrow. All right. She's got her headphones and yeah. her iPad. And does just, she have that's like, awesome. What is it? Yeah, she's ready to go. Status or yeah, she's whatever. got like, she a does. Yeah, yeah, she does have points yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. I wish they gave points to animals because we fly with our dogs. Like, oh, really? Like <laughs> We've actually asked, is there a point system? For <laughs> that's, that's a great thought. My dog has a bigger status than all of you and coach. Yeah. Exactly. That's awesome. Yeah, that's cool. I think, I just, what you said, remind me a little bit of like, 
my dad back in Venezuela used to play uh like softball like with like other like uh like in this country club like mm -hmm. tournament stuff and yeah. that was like our travel like we would like right. go to different country clubs and and while he was playing like we would just enjoy the the pool well, and you the got whatever. to go to different yeah exactly yeah, so it's like it's like it'd be a, w a great way for them to for us to like go places and then he would do you know like so right. it's like kind of like what you were doing yep. with your daughter which is pretty cool I like I enjoy that yeah. I, I want to well, do that well. if I have kids so they can come with me to my gigs and then they'll be yeah, like yeah hey. I mean I'm guilty of that too I love pairing up my holiday with my latest gig or whatever sure. if it's in a destination yeah. I, you know I have trouble if separating everything works the two out great yeah. all the time in fact it, it used to become a bit of a bad habit because often if I come back from the road if I'm dating somebody and I come back from the road and often she's like, let's go on a little holiday. And I'm like, oh, let's, let's stay yeah, home yeah, yeah. and order takeaway <laughs> yeah. instead. But, you know, I, I yeah. bored the other half yeah. because she's been waiting for me to come back sure. from yeah. whatever, New York or whatever. So I'm, I'm very guilty of that. But, <laughs> yeah. but I can't help it. You're, no, I mean, you're exhausted yeah. when you return from the road. You are. So you don't really want to. Of course. To you're not, the last thing you want to do is go to another like hotel yeah. so, somewhere. Especially you know. the conventions, too. Like, you... Are there for you know three days straight at a table, yeah. yeah. And it, and again, like the Robin Williams thing I was using before about that, uh, the, you're meeting a whole bunch of hundreds of people, but for them it's the first time coming yes. up. And a lot of times they stand like ten feet away, and you can tell they're nervous mm -hmm. about right. coming up. They're intimidated or whatever. They're just scared. Yeah. A lot of people are very socially awkward at conventions. Like yeah. a lot of people mm -hmm. are, whatever nerdy, whatever you want to call them. Um, but they're very nervous about talking yeah. to you. And sometimes you have to coax them over and say, hey, how you doing? And then yeah. they're, oh, I'm good. And then that opens the door for, yeah, for no. them to come over. You know? I, is that the way it generally works? Is it generally three days at a, at a convention when you travel usually, to a convention? Usually. And then what kind of hours are you Friday, under to it, sit there? Because it, it is a contract, isn't it? Do you have to fulfill a contract when you're Yeah, you there? do. You're, you're expected to be at the tables because for a lot of times they'll give you a guarantee of what you may – make mm -hmm. right certain conventions don't have any guarantees do you at get all a bonus so if big. people line up more or right. something like that <laughs> like if you get more people lighten up right well, well they don't but you you can make you can make past so. your guarantee yeah and, and sometimes you know uh, sometimes some people make substantially past that and sometimes you don't make it mm -hmm. it's rare but right and that must be when the pressure comes on because you'll have the promoter or booker or whatever we call them down yeah. there. come on get more people in here i haven't even made my minimum yet kind oh of man i did one in alabama and right away it didn't look good all right, right. It was right. called Campicon. Camp okay. It's in a campground. Uh, and we'll get a great people uh, in. We'll get some barbecue. Uh, Roll time. Yeah. Roll time. Yeah. I don't that's know if it's going to be work. heavily attended. Is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. it was in Alabama, so it was yeah. really difficult flight-wise to get to quickly. And then I flew, and then they lost my bag with all my gear uh, in it. So I got there, and I didn't really have much. And it was literally tents. And the guy had, like, axe throwers and... Oh. and there's one guy, I don't know, he was just a reptile guy. And he, literally, he'd come by <laughs> oh, wow. with like a three-foot gator, and he'd go, you want to kiss the gator? <laughs> I swear to God, I swear to God. And I'm like, I don't want to kiss the gator. And he had it taped up going, come on, give him a little pink. <laughs> He's making Tiger King look yeah, good. Yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah. And it was wow. really weird. And then there was an accident on the highway, so nobody, they, they cut off the overpass that, uh, that got to it. So nobody was there. Oh, man. I made like $200 wow. on a guarantee that was, you know, more, more than, than that. that yeah. And I felt really bad for the guy, but he was very nice. He said, no, no, yeah, you know, here's, he paid us out and it, there was no problem. But it was it because, so when you make those things because uh, people go to those conference, they, they yeah. you have to pay a ticket to get in. That's how they make it? Or? Usually, yeah, there's a fee or to get into it. And then there's they, well. they charge for autographs. Oh, of, got it, got it, got it. Individuals can charge kind yeah. of whatever they want. Like mm -hmm. it, really big name people. Some of the, you know, the it could be like 80, uh, William Shatner autograph could be like, you know, $100 for an autograph. Oh, you know, wow. and, and people line up and there's, it's wow. just, he does as many as he wants to sign. As God. artists, as artists, you guys all talk of like, are you all like, I want to say backstage, but elsewhere I'm going, he overcharges. So <laughs> under, that's the deal of the Comic Con there. That <laughs> yeah, guy's yeah. only 20 bucks, but that guy, right. he charges 80 bucks. Fuck him. What a, <laughs> well, what it an is, asshole. There is a little bit of that, but I went yeah. to one in, in North Carolina uh, three weeks ago. And Where they, in North they, Carolina? My fiance is from North Carolina. Uh, Fayetteville. Shout out oh. to Francisco. Well, I did. Fiance. I tried. She's not from there, but I did <laughs> do a show. I did a stand-up show, like in I think it was like a, two months ago in Fayetteville. And big military. Yeah, it's uh, a big military crowd, thing, obviously yeah, yeah, for yeah. Uh, Fort Bragg, mm -hmm. which was cool. I mean, I didn't get have any time to look around. I actually wanted to, but I didn't get a chance. But that one was where they the convention kind of set the price for all of us that it was consistent. 
Um, and sometimes it's a little right. bit more than you want to like charge, that. but they're like, oh, no, no, this is what, how we want to set it up. And you're like, okay, you know, they have a, Got it's, it. you get a contract right. and it's like this, this it's like doing a gig it, and it's like, it. okay, this is, this is how it's set up. And yeah. are you okay with all this? Yeah, and you yeah, get a yeah. room and you get a, you know, small, yeah, it's like, small the one like, a, like it's a, like, it's a, it's a gig. Yeah. 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 At a couple of comedy festivals that I've been to, sometimes when there's yeah. another comedian signing, you know, they all sign afterwards or, right. you know, you, you sign a whatever DVD or Right. Whatever DVDs are long gone now. I've got like <laughs> yeah, now I've geez. got like digital uh, digital business cards USBs that, right. I, that I sell. But and in the time Nobody I even remember, uses that anymore. JJ. Uh, yeah. What you got? You got to get a VCR. No, everybody loves it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, VCR. Like does, trouble does trouble does of VCRs. Um, yeah, yeah, so I will just, sign VCRs. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I've got USBs and stuff. But I remember there was a comedian. Uh, it was I was at the Sydney Comedy Festival who was charging. Um, this would be the DVD already. He was it was like thirty bucks for a dvd but 45 for him to sign it and that kind of oh, made wow. me feel oh, gross yeah. i just felt like ah, oh, they're all lining up to buy your dvd anyway just sign it for free but he's yeah. like oh no yeah. right. Sign signature's an extra 15 bucks yeah yeah. that yeah. was it that was another level well of at the conventions arrogance. it's almost the opposite of that where they're paying for your signature on a lot of items they bring yeah because right. they but bring also, something that's, that, that's i mean i i, w I always try to buy like things throughout the year for conventions where oh, it's not interesting it. things right. like Pop figures mm -hmm. or your own yeah. VCRs. Yeah, <laughs> I bring my own VCRs. Stack. <laughs> stack of VCRs. This is from my childhood. It's yeah. like, is this from, from Dragon Ball? No, this is my childhood. This is when I when I was like, my dad took me to practice. I'm just like, that's not this. Yeah. Yeah. Still, it's yeah. mine. Man. <laughs> that's cool. And when you're in those conferences, are you like, um, when you have free time, like, how do you spend your free time if you have any, like? When you're yeah. on, when you're you know like when you're do you look to forward usually, to you know, seeing the town or sometimes these convention sometimes. halls are in the middle of nowhere. Sometimes they? they are, yeah. yeah. But you always look at the like the other guest attendees, like the other like celebrity, if you want to call them attendees, and yeah. sometimes you see people that you know and you, are really fun. So it's like you know once the table shut down, it's like okay, let's go drink, and then uh, they, yeah. and it's you know it's hilarious and it's fun and yeah, nice. that's you know that's you go have a good time. Very similar to stand up comedy. Yeah, the when shows you look over at the bill and, yeah, and yeah. you're like, oh, this person and that person are there. I like to hang out with them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. See, oh, this person, is this that person. person. This uh, is gonna suck. Yeah, yeah that's... I'm just gonna go back to my room. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and is there anything like, oh, if anything like, if you want to check out like. Do you like, are you like a foodie? Is like, I want to check out the food here. Yeah. Or are you a coffee player? Or like, mm -hmm. oh, he likes going to sports events or stuff like that. You know, like. Here, here's oh, one. Here's yeah. one. A few years back, it was me uh, and another actor from Stargate. We're in uh, just outside of Baltimore. Mm -hmm. I don't know how it came up. I, I was like, well, I always try, you know, I like uh, a beer and wine and kind mm -hmm. of thing. So if there's a local beer, I want to try that. Yeah. You know, something I haven't had before. Yeah. Or a food that's localized. And I was yeah. like, well, what's Baltimore famous for? And I found out crab cakes. Crabs, yeah. Mm. I'm and from then, Maryland. So okay, why, okay. Yeah, yeah. And then somebody told us, oh, no, you got to go to that restaurant. I can't remember the name right now. That Oprah Winfrey used to just pretty much live at uh -huh. and have these certain crab cakes that she's like crazy Apparently for. on a film, she used them to cater the film because she loved the food so much. Wow. And when she was a newscaster there, she would go there all the time. So it's world. It was so a told, color purple. By the way. <laughs> 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 no, no, I'm not sure. Actually, I'm, I'm not, not sure which one it was. No, no, no. Um, It'd be weird. They, like, yeah. like such a serious <laughs> film is like, here's some crab cakes. <laughs> But me and the other guy, you know, we hopped in an Uber and we went there, and it's like, oh, okay, we're gonna go to nice. Oprah Winfrey's uh, crab cake place. Yeah. So it was like something different. Yeah, that's yeah. fun. I like doing that. I like going to like eating, especially like when you're on the road. By like most of the times, I'm by myself. I'm like, yeah. Like I want to enjoy the food. That's something that's, that's local something, from there. Local, like, yeah, for sure. yeah. Most of the times, especially when you go to small towns, you know, most of the times a lot of the chains are mm -hmm. there, and I'm like, I don't want to eat the same fucking chilies or Applebee's well, every, or whatever. Every time we do this Dallas one, we 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 make sure we always hit like a Texas barbecue, like yeah, a, yeah. an authentic one with the barrels and the mops of barbecue sauce, and all <laughs> right? Yeah. That kind of dirt, slightly dirty place. Yeah, you know? yeah. yeah. Peanut shells on the ground. Where you want like to, where you like, go, that's like, the authentic yeah. stuff. So every time we go there, we always do the barbecue. So I like what you're saying. Like any, any food that's local, you want to try that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I feel like that's. I mean, especially for me, sometimes it's just to when you have uh, t days to spend there. Like you yeah. know, like might as well use it to mm -hmm. to like, learn something. And also for for stand up, it also works. But oh, to, to work. educating yourself. Yeah, yeah, no, so you can, things. you know, to yeah, start sure. the show, yeah, to sure. get them connected. Yeah. Like, hey, I, I ate some of it. down at your little restaurant yeah, today. Yeah, yeah. And then, Something like that. Yeah, that's, yeah. Always, that's what I was going to say, too. Yeah. It's always handy that you, to know that's your little bit of local. Yeah, yeah you get sure. Just something that they go up. like, oh, okay, you know, and then you can do whatever yeah. you want. But, mm -hmm. yeah, I always, I feel like, and, and, then, and then when you travel, but you also try to travel internationally, right? And then is there any... 
when you travel, are there, uh, is there anything that you learn from another country that you're like, man, I would love to bring this back to Vancouver or the U.S. or I wish they would do this here in North America? You, you know, know what's big in, in Europe and it's fantastic when you are traveling there? Breakfast. Like the, oh, the, mm. at full the hotels. English breakfast. Full, yes. English, the full, full breakfast. Full Scottish breakfast. I was like, yeah. breakfast, North America, they're just like, well, here's a Jimmy John sausage. <laughs> for all of you. Here's a microwave right there. A <laughs> minute and a half. Some old meal that's from like 1984. It's like, hor- they're horrible here. They're absolutely horrible. Yeah, yeah. But meanwhile, you go to anywhere, in, anywhere in Europe, that's expected. And not just like a little bit of shit. Like, it, yeah. it's a spread. Yes. And if they don't have it, like, there are people yeah. are upset. There. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. So did that's you, always great. Did you try a bit of black pudding? Bit of breakfast I have tried black pudding, pudding in England. What, yeah. you, what were your thoughts? Nope, not for me. <laughs> <laughs> What's black pudding? Uh, well, good. the main ingredient. Oh, it's delicious. <laughs> I think it's good. delicious, but it's a uh, main ingredient is uh, congealed pig's blood. Oh. Um, so it's like pig blood and oats and stuff, and it's done like a big. It's basically like a, a sausage. blood sausage, right? Like a blood sausage. It, yeah, I yeah. Guess. It's, it's like, like a hardcore blood sausage. Yeah. 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 It does taste uh, pretty bloody. It does. It's got yeah. that. It's well, got like that. in in Latin America, they have this thing called <laughs> morcillas, which is like a, it's like the it's, it is a it's blood sausage. So yeah. it's like yeah, it's basically the the you eat it with when you eat uh, chorizos, and then you have mm-hmm. like the blood sausage. Yeah. So I mm-hmm. like that, but that's like yeah, I understand how heavy it is. Yeah, like, it's I can an acquired eat, taste. You gotta eat like a little bit, and then that's yeah. too much. You know, you're right though. There isn't a full. American breakfast, is there? No, there's no, 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 but I do. Even it's, Denny's, it's, it's, well, there's it's pancakes, isn't there? But, but that's well, not even from the hotel. No, no, but yeah, I mean, yeah. like from the hotel when you're traveling and you, yeah. you don't want to have to spend 80 bucks on breakfast. True. It's just, yeah. Yeah. I was in Italy just like uh, oh, two fanta- months. It's fantastic. I, I mean, like, I went to the we're, coffee alone. Yeah, just that. And then we same thing. I remember we stay first uh, city we went to was Alba, like in North in Italy mm-hmm. by Torino. Yeah. And then, yeah, the whole, I mean, it was like they had like. Honey, like they had the like the the what is it called? Honeycomb. Uh, the mean? honeycomb yeah, already yeah, there yeah. with the honey oh. that you could like like it yeah. was like like basically they just, they just ripped it up from yeah. Winnie the Pooh. I'm like, give me <laughs> right. this shit. And I was like, and then and that they had you know obviously all the meats you know the prosciuttos yeah. and the hams and the cheeses oh. and then mm. eggs and then and that was just that's it. That was like the breakfast. We went to Italy a few years back, and I, I, our daughter was young. And uh, I found these things called uh, agroturismos, Mm -hmm. which are, they're basically converted farmhouses, but they've brought, been brought up to, you know, they got internet, flat screen TVs and all that. But if you look from the outside, they look all authentic. So chicken feathers in the walls, literally. Oh, Oh, right. Cool. (laughs) But they're amazing places to stay in the, and they have different ones all over the countryside, Uh. right? So if you ever go to Italy, I recommend, because they're Uh. not that much more expensive than a hotel, but. The experience is incredible. It's really cool. Yeah. And the first day we went, you know, dirt road, olive trees everywhere, and there's this, you know, young Italian gal waiting for us, and she's like, oh, she's showing us around. You're like, oh, okay, here we have this, and we have a breakfast in the morning, and yeah. And then she, there's this rack of Amarone wines and this big display. Amarone is like our favorite wine. That's yeah. we, that's why we kind of stayed there with oh, the region. Okay. And she goes, and this is the Honesty Bar, and I'm like, what? It, it, oh, it, uh, right. what? You take a wine, you, you write your name. Ah, and I'm like, what do you, mean? you just trust that we're going to write our name? I see. To like to to charge for it? You just because yeah. they leave. The You're the only ones there. And she goes, just grab a bottle and yeah, write your name down. And wow. then we'll charge you later. Just oh. at the honesty bar. Wow. Right? The honesty bar. That's so cool. And it was like, OK. And then we woke up the next day. We were the only ones in this hotel. It probably has like 10 or 12 little units in it. Yeah. Only ones there. And we went down for breakfast. And then I looked I looked around the room. and I was like, are there like another 20 people staying here? Like the yeah. just. The spread was insane. Was crazy, and you were the only one. We're the only ones there. And I was like, "Are other people here?" No. (laughs) (laughs) Can can we get another espresso? (laughs) See, see, see. And we must have had like four espressos because it's the best damn coffee ever. And it was like prosciutto and just yeah, just oh my god, figs and it was that unbelievable. I do remember, yeah, when I went there, I was I felt because I think we were the only ones there too, and I felt bad. I'm like, because they're like, and it's also there's like three people in their stations just standing there, and I'm like, and I feel. I feel like well, like I wanted to order from everything. Yeah. Just I better eat I was, more. Yeah, because I, I feel like they, they, oh, they wow. did all this shit. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Very yeah. decadent. Yeah the, yeah, the breakfast is is is, is that's what I do. Is, I do realize that because yeah, every time you come here, it's like 
yeah. And then the ones that are good, you have to pay for it extra or something like that. Right. Like here in the U.S. and stuff like that. So, but yeah. if not, it's like you get the shit. I don't even eat those breakfasts. They're anymore. not good. They're like no, they're no not way. good. Like half heated no, up it's... scrambled eggs, garbage. No, they're bacon. even like not even real. I mean, like the eggs are like some. No, I mean, they no, just yeah, yeah, put it some from some bag. No, or something. it's all yeah. like from a Seven yeah. Eleven or yeah. it's that kind of quality <laughs> level of yeah, shit. Yeah, and yeah. You're like, I don't need this in the morning. Which you feel yeah. like, yeah, that's gonna and make you feel horrible. And they horrible. take it away before you're even done as well. They don't care. That happened yeah, to us this weekend. We were taking our time, and the coffee. They had a coffee machine where it was gone. We couldn't even get coffee on the way out of this <laughs> shitty, you know, shitty yeah, breakfast no, I, situation. I it's, it's bad. It's bad. I've always heard at diners, like, don't never get scrambled eggs because they can just make them from, like, a powder. Get, like, a real, oh, get, yeah. like, a yeah. sunny oh, side really up because they have to give oh, you a real right. egg. Like, yeah. if you do scramble, they can be, yeah, just those garbage. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so always get, like, fried. Well, get, a, get, like, yeah. Yeah, get, like, a sunny side up or something, yeah, because then the, you, at least you know it's a real egg they just cracked uh, on. You know? Wow. Mm. Jeez. Well, I'm not eating those <laughs> now, Fuck that. we've got another question that we always ask our guests but this is the, we just have to crowbar it in in this situation because right. we've been riffing about all these other topics but we'd love to know if our if our guests uh feel superstitious about things as they're traveling to their different destinations if you have like lucky charms that you take with you you know we've had or a sentimental stuff. item there you, you go know, yeah. that, that, mm. that you'd love to bring with you uh while like taking a picture of my daughter but I mean, I have a lot of those oh, on that's, my phone. But that's I, I have a, oh, yeah, I have but a real like I have that, an actual like, paper. What my dad I, used to have. In his, yeah, yeah, I have. Like, I, that's you know, lovely. It's in my travel bag, and you know, I look at her pretty little face every now and then. And, you know, it's, oh, that's it's that, a dad thing. I think yeah. that that um, might be my favorite answer so far. That is so. That's <laughs> yeah. that's a lovely. Yeah, thing because there. you know, you you see her, and you know, we Facetime if I'm away for a longer period of time. But uh, that's cool. You know, every now and then you steal a look yeah no, yeah that's cool. especially going old school it's not just on your phone yeah or something. It's a, yeah it's an actual, exactly yeah which uh people don't do enough anymore yeah and then yeah. uh and you don't have any uh uh superstitious or anything like that or or lucky shirts or lucky stuff that you bring to the uh, stand up or to I, I get uh, a, a little, gig or something i get a little rain man with packing <laughs> like okay. i'll okay pack and then check it again yeah i'm and like then that. a third time but my wife never has to worry she doesn't worry about any of that shit because mm -hmm. she knows i've Checked it five times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like right. I'm, I'm the one who makes the travel plans. She's just like, let's just go. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we'll find a hotel. We won't find no, a hotel. No, no, it's yeah, yeah. New Year's Eve. We're not going to find a hotel. I'm like that. Yes, we will. It'll come to us. <laughs> that's what they say makes the perfect couples. If there's well, that's one exactly person who's yeah. casual about everything, well, that's absolutely. Person, I think it's that's just, how we got to be my, there. We got to go yeah, do this. Yeah. I think that's how I'm with my uh, fiance too. I mean, I'm the same way. I'm like, yeah, no, I'm, I like to have like, I like to have my shit to be like, okay, this is what we. I mean, I realize also you have to learn to like let uh, go, sometimes. let go, and like I, I, if I'm it, learning that from her. But also like, but it's also, but then when when shit works out because I fucking like, <laughs> exactly. prepare, I'm like you see, yeah. you see, if I didn't have this, it would right. have been stranded here. You know what I mean? Do you right. have to point that out to her? Does she? Oh yeah, I point it out. Does she often think she get casual? I'll point it out. Casual, of course. Yes. You I'll didn't come up out. the Eiffel Tower <laughs> on your own. Yeah, 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 yeah. I booked this shit in advance. Yes. I like that. And also, that's why I tell people, too. Like, when I went to Italy, too, I did all the, we did all the, um, you know, tours to go to, like, yeah. and I recommend that. I think people yeah. are like, yeah, yeah. you want to go. No, nah, fuck, what are you doing? You don't know. First time there, you want right. to pe people that know, that know what the hell's going on. Sure. And also, like, also, and also, you're not doing lines. You're going quicker because you right. get, that's how you pay for it to go quicker. But, like, sure. I recommend, like, if you want, like. Any, like, when I went to, the, when went to the Vatican or the Colosseum, you know, tours and, you know, and they're like, and they're like telling you stuff that you actually learn from, you know, you're yeah. actually paying attention, not stuff that you're like reading in Google or whatever, you know what I mean? And I, and I would try to, we went to Italy and, and I went on, you know, iTunes and downloaded this uh, learning Italian cafe thing uh, or something. All right. So I tried to learn basic stuff, yeah. which they, kind of, they appreciated, right? Yeah. And then we went to, to, Paris, I was trying to remember all my schooling in Canada because yeah. we had to learn French, which you hated at the yeah. time, right? So I, and I remember there was a, I was, the family was asleep because of jet lag, and I went down for a beer, and I, there was a guy next to me, and I said, you know, est-ce que vous parlez anglais? Uh -huh. And he's like, oui, 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 oui. And, uh, and I was asking him if there's any restaurants that he could recommend close by. Oh, yeah, you know, you go to, and he says, your accent very strange. <laughs> <laughs> your, there's no. Uh, inflection at all. <laughs> where, where are you you're from? <laughs> very strange. <laughs> strange man. You're a very strange man. <laughs> That's yeah. hilarious. I, uh, I did. I did try to take. Uh, I took Duolingo. Uh, you know, just to before I went to, uh, you know, um, 
uh, Italy, and yeah. I, I I didn't learn anything. I took it for like three. No. The only thing, because Duolingo only teaches you phrases that you're never gonna use. Yeah. Like I only learned yeah. <laughs> uh, Louis bebe el zucchero, which means he drinks the sugar. Like when the wow, fuck, that's <laughs> like when the hell am I gonna use that? I was just I hoping I would run into a thirsty diabetic guy. I'd be like, oh, here it is. He you drinks know? the sugar. Yeah. Yeah. But it's like <laughs> it's it's just not. Uh, I, and also, I don't know if it happened to you. One thing that I couldn't get when I was in Italy, I was like, they would keep saying, uh, you know, prego means you're prego. welcome. Yeah. But then they were, but we went to places. Doesn't mean places. you're pregnant. Yeah, no. But then we went to places, they're like, prego. And then they would say prego. And then, and I'd be like confused because I was like, but then I realized it's just they use prego for a lot of stuff or like saying like, right. welcome or like come in or like, you know, right. ah, and then you're welcome. So it's right. like, or right. like, what do you need? Or, you know, it's just a lot of ways, but. Prego, I was very confused. I would try to speak at times, like, yeah, and they'd be like, and they just start speaking English. They're like, yeah, you don't know anything. <laughs> <Yeah>. right. stop, <laughs> trying to, stop trying to learn stop trying to learn English. Just we speak English. Well, I remember when I went to Montreal, one of my first times, I tried to again use the French, and I think the cab driver just got angry. Yeah, with me. <laughs> That's a very Quebec yeah, thing. They, they don't like the rest of yeah. English speaking Canada all that much, or, or a group of them, the large groups of them don't. Yeah, they're, they're very uh, kind of they're very by their own account very isolated, and if you don't speak their Quebecois French, they, yeah. they because they it's can different get really, from, from French. Right. No, no, it's that very different. Very much traumatized me as a kid because I went to bilingual yeah. school in okay. Nova Scotia. Okay, but in our big trip as we graduated, uh, so it would have been junior junior high, we right. graduating grade nine was a trip to Quebec City. And and uh, to all try French and all I remember is trying to speak French and then them all going just speak English speak English and just right because they it. hate yeah. Parisian yeah. French there. trying they to are, learn. again oh, a really? big, they don't yeah. little uh, what's down the difference Parisian. is it accent or or is it certain like... words and accent a very basic example is in France you know gasoline is le pétrole mm -hmm. in Quebec le gas Ah. <laughs> Look at it. Uh, okay, okay. You know, one example, yeah, but just... it, it multiply that a thousand times. Oh, where got it. where yeah. they've, I don't want to say bastardized the, the French the original version French. of the language yeah, yeah, and yeah. they've they Canadianized or roughed it up or whatever you mm. want to call it. But, uh, you know, you get, a, there, there's lots of stories of uh, English speaking Canadians going to Montreal. Uh, yeah, yeah. Not being treated as friendly as they yeah. would expect. Yeah, yeah, yeah entirely. Yeah. And they've, of, of all these places that you travel, is there any, um, uh, favorite destination that you have traveled and also that if you had had chance to perform in like is there a place that or any other city that you're like oh i love performing here you know yeah um you know two questions i guess right yeah. no, uh I, well, I want to get to australia i was born in australia but i haven't oh, been, okay. I haven't been oh, back right. i left very young so i really okay. want to go to australia um, when did you uh, when did you leave in australia? i was like three oh okay, okay. so you're like yeah. so no memory of it but yeah. um and i had to a few years back get my birth certificate from them, uh -huh. and right? My parents had being Greek; it, they got a. It might baptism. be handy with the world ending. Yeah, really. You might the, Australia might be because even Vancouver's underwater right yeah, now. Yeah, exactly. It's a good <laughs> destination. Um, my parents had like a my baptism thing, and for Greeks, like it's the same thing. <laughs> it's not the yeah, same yeah. thing. It's not the same. Yeah, yeah. One's a hospital. You know, yeah, I don't yeah. care. <laughs> this um, is legal. I document. Yeah, no, this no, is just they from the they church. Uh, so I had to call and get and, and get it changed because actually. But without making the story too long, I had to renew a driver's license. Uh -huh. right? And they go, okay, well, what's your, where's your ID? And I said, well, here's a passport. And they go, well, no, no, we need a birth certificate. I was like, okay, here's my birth oh. certificate. And it had my Greek name on it. Uh -huh. The one that, the, sorry, the one that my parents had. Yeah. The baptism, it said Panayoti. And they're like, doesn't match. And I go, so where, so where, where do I do now? Yeah. Well, you have to change yeah. your name. Oh. I go, to what? To Peter. And I go, everything already says my passport, says yeah, Peter. Yeah, yeah. No, then you have to officially change your name and then come back like to us. And I go, are you kidding? Oh, like, I just shit. married somebody. Oh, and I want oh, to take over their name. Yeah. So I had to go through a legal name change to change wow. it to Peter, which I had gone through my entire life. Yeah. and had a passport and everything. So I had to call Australia to the uh, the Department of Births, Deaths, and Marriages. <laughs> <laughs> well, all one, all one building. Wow. Births, Deaths, Marriages, one place. <laughs> <laughs> and you can only call like at two in the morning for yeah, the time yeah, change yeah, yeah. for it to be okay to, to converse with a human. And they were like, okay, hey, Peter, this is what we need. <laughs> we need a, a, a letter from a lawyer. Yeah. <laughs> And then I would send it, and it'd be two months, three months go by, and then I call them uh, and go, he, "Yeah, what we're missing is." <laughs> and it took like about a year, and uh, I finally got a Peter Klamis Australia like birth, birth certificate. certificate. Yeah. Oh, nah, I, wow. That's and then, um, 
So, uh, so you were saying, so you were born there, but like in terms of traveling, like you say, you want to go back there? To, I, well, I'd like to, to get to Australia. Yeah, to, yeah. Uh, Italy was probably the coolest. Yeah, you don't remember there. much from when you were no, no, nothing, under three. Nothing. <laughs> uh, no. As far as performing yeah. in different places, I got to do a film once. Uh, it was a Canadian uh, Scottish co production. So we did half of it in Canada, and, and I got to spend like a week in Scotland, which was mm. phenomenal. I'd never wow. been. Yeah. So it was really cool. And I arranged a comedy club set at the stand. Yep, um, that's where my career started. Yeah, just uh, really. Yeah, that's, yeah, I, I started. Think I, knew that. I think I knew that. I started at the Stan Comedy Club in yeah. Scotland. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So this one was outside uh, the Glasgow one. That's where right uh, that's where I did it, which you Little probably been, been yeah. to. Um, and I went there, and and I literally got off the plane. Our plane was delayed, landed, and the other yeah. actress was a friend of mine. And I was like, and she's like, "Oh, what are you gonna do?" Because we're jet lagged. On. I said, "Well, I got a set set up at a comedy <laughs> yeah, club yeah, in like yeah. an hour," and she's like, "Oh, I'll come." Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we went and. And it was great doing a set because you're so jet lagged, you're kind of punch drunk. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. And uh, the comedians were hilarious. There was one guy there. He was East Indian. He's obviously grown up there, so he had this East Indian, Glasgow, wow. thick Glaskian, Glaskian accent, <laughs> Glaswegian, Glaswegian accent. And yeah. it was the strangest. I do voices, you know, yeah. for a living, and I could not take my eyes off. I'm like, Dude, that's the weirdest sound wow. thing I've ever. Heard. <laughs> But the comics there it's were hilarious. It's very interesting in Scotland, too. Every ethnicity from all around the world, yeah. when they move to Scotland, they're learning English as their second language, but it's going to have a heavy Scottish, it's a Scottish yeah, right. lilt to yeah. it. Yeah. So when you meet these people, yeah, they start speaking English no. being their yeah, second language. No, he runs other, who likes butter chicken? <laughs> I love it. <laughs> <laughs> this doesn't match. It's so weird. Yeah, yeah it's very funny. It is, it is funny to see when, like, uh, I even have a friend, one of my, one of my uh, childhood friends. He moved to England, and then so he learned English over there. Yeah, yeah. With a British accent, so he's speaking with a British accent, with yeah. a little bit of British accent. Yeah. But I'm like, what? Well, it's so weird for him when I listen. Yeah. To him. Like, like, like when you, you can, doing? yeah, like when you see a white guy speaking Mandarin or something, speaking yeah, perfect, like yeah. how yeah, a white yeah. guy can freak somebody out and they speak perfect Mandarin. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and yeah, yeah. Like, what the heck happened yeah. here? Something <laughs> weird. Something, always, something's amiss. I always like comics who have funny bits about traveling other places. One of my favorite ones was uh, Tim Reichert has a f hilarious bit about but him and his wife had gone to Italy years back and then they wanted to walk into the Vatican and he goes, and we got there and the, there's a policeman there and he's trying to tell us that my wife can't come in because her skirt is too uh, yeah. short. Mm -hmm. And he's trying to tell her, and he's like, "You can, you can overcome. It's uh, your, um, you say that you are too much uh, uh, yeah. slut. <laughs> you're a whore, honey. You can't go to the Vatican. You're a whore. No whores in the Vatican. Very clear. Yes. That's funny. Uh, well, buddy, we're 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 winding this down. Yeah. Um. We uh before we get to our final question, I obviously on behalf of all your fans who are tuning in, I have to ask this question, which I'm which I said to you before the podcast. I'm scared to ask this because it feels like when you as a comedian, when when people walk up to us as stand ups and go tell us a joke, then et cetera. Right. But I know your fans are tuning in, and I was wondering, are there some quick voices you could rattle off for us, um, you know, that'll blow everybody's minds tuning in right now and make them all happy? I have to ask that on behalf yeah. of people. I feel shame. Well, one, one thing is uh, sometimes when you get an audition, you <clears throat> try to match it to a voice that you recognize from real life, whether it be politics or, you know, entertainment, whatever. Is it? Oh, yeah. sorry, sorry. I've been doing all my auditions wrong. <laughs> 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 I should not. I'm going to start. <laughs> now nah, I'm going to do that. No, okay. there, was, there was a show called, a, year, a few years back called Crypto the Superdog, uh, where it was Crypto, crypto? the Superdog, but like there was, he had other uh, superhero kind of dogs with him. Yeah. And I, I had auditioned for Tail Terrier. And all I did was a Ross Perot Right. Complete ripoff and got the gig, but it was like, okay, here's what's going down now. <laughs> <laughs> and it was like, we love it. You know, <laughs> really? And they just, so like, just, why did you pick, is it just, you just, well, like... he, was, he was a little Texas kind of terrier. Okay. And uh, I just, the best thing for me is sometimes they give you a big description and I, I don't know, I kind of read it. Yeah. But for me, if they give you a sketch of the character yeah, right that, away, when I see the vo yeah. you're like, okay, well, that's what that guy thinks. Oh, uh, okay. So oh, cool. that and then, uh, for for Dragon Ball Z, you always uh, we always, when you do a series and you do it often, there's always like a reference line or something to bring you back to your voice ref. Mm, like when you okay. take a break and you yeah, and you haven't been back for a few weeks. Like, oh, do you want us to play your ref? And you're like, sure. Or you have a oh. certain phrase that you would do from a line that oh, you always remember for a weird that reason. It clicks, yeah. <clears throat> and for me, it was for Goku. It was uh, that Tubble Lord was a good warm up. 
uh, <laughs> for whatever reason. That would get you going. Yeah, into the, okay, riff. now I've centered back into the into voice. It, and, uh, oh, that's so cool. I can head back in. That is cool. I've gotten that whole thing of like, I mean, the few times I got into like, hey, can you do this? Like, yeah. you know, they play what I played in the audition or whatever. And they're like, hey, can you just match that or whatever? You know? Right. Oh, but, right. Uh, but cool, I'm going to, this is cool. I'm, I'm very excited because now I'm like, hopefully I can yeah. use this too. We just learned an extra little trick. Yes, yes. Because I, mean, I think uh, it's from, from a professional, you know, because it, yeah. it is such a thing. I tell people because people always go like, well, you do voice. I was like, I mean, I got lucky and I done a couple, but I never like, I cannot consider myself a professional, you know, because Especially, I don't do voices. I just do me and, you know, <laughs> right. and like variations right. of me. I'm like, I don't have that ability of like what you do of like going from one to the other, you know, and yeah. that's a skill that you're, but also just even the, just, uh, the, the, it's a, prof it's a, it's like a, it's such a skill to do and mm -hmm. the craft, you know, it's kind of like acting or like doing stand up. It's like, yeah, it's, it's so, it's, it's very hard. People don't realize is you can just like go up and do some voices and, you get it. You no, know you gotta mean? be. You and, gotta and, after, and I've used, I did this uh, Transformers uh, TV thing, uh, cartoon once, and I, there was a parrot character again, um, and I used it was kind of a Gilbert Gottfried ripoff. Right. Yeah. Like, well, I need a cracker right now. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and it's like they they roll with it. Uh, but the pirate voice that I did this morning, when I first read for it a years a few years back, it was a bastardized version, bastardized version of. Uh, see, I'm missing. I'm listening because I'm missing a tooth. I had a tooth uh, uh, emergency about a year ago. Oh, right. Really? Oh, so no. I, I have a flipper thing to put in, but it's just, it's affecting, it affects my speech. But you did it because of the pirates. Though. Yeah, the pirates. I'm committed. <laughs> you're so you're, you're, all, you're all, method. It all also, fits. I, I've always wanted to work in a bingo hall. So, <laughs> um, but the one this morning was a bastardized version of Barry Kennedy, who's a, a legendary Canadian comic and fighter pilot, of all things. Right? But he would, he would talk like this. Right? Uh, no, no, seriously. And he always had the best pilot stories, yeah. you know, the crazy stories. And so that turned into this pirate character, you know, uh, a version of it. So yeah, you always yeah. draw upon growing up and people that you meet along the way and just go, well, you know, I think this character might be this guy mixed with, with this, this person. One, yeah. And it right. might sound like this. Mm, that's awesome. That's Very pretty cool. Excellent, man. Well, you've been, you've been a fantastic guest, man. Thank you well, so thank much you. Yes. for taking time out of your very busy schedule to come and play with us here today. And we, it. we, our final question that we always like to ask our guests on the way out the door is, do you have one little piece of travel advice that you've, that you've held up? Maybe it was handed to you once upon a time mm -hmm. that you love passing on to other people or, you know, or just holding. Well, I think uh, it doesn't uh, have to be one. It could be several if you want to. I, 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 I think you have three. No, no, you know, I, I think people on their deathbed, uh, maybe maybe it's me speculating, but maybe say two things. They should have had more sex and traveled more. Mm -hmm. So uh, one of those things maybe you can't control. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but the other one, if you have a chance to travel, yes. do it. Don't hesitate because uh, you never know what could happen to you tomorrow or happen mm -hmm. to the world tomorrow. Yes. I mean, look at us now. Yes. So when, when things open up again, Get out there, experience this world because there's a lot to see, a lot of beautiful. And you places. learn so much. I always tell people, like, I mean, especially like when you're little. I think, like, especially when you're young, that's the best time to travel because you learn so much just yeah. of how other people do it, how other cultures do it. But yeah. also, you learn a lot from yourself too because, sure, especially when you start traveling by yourself, you learn how to like, you know, handle yourself and all this mm -hmm. stuff. It's like, and it just makes you a smarter, more well. I, I think you know, so too. You know, and, and, yeah. and being like in the states, I mean, it's such a big country. A lot of people get in, insulated here because there's so many places to go within the country to travel. And so many atmosphere. Or yeah. Or so I think yeah. if you travel, try to travel internationally and just different cultures and foods and all that. Yeah. Just get out there and experience as much yes. as you can. Yeah. And right yeah. now it's so easy. Before, I mean, you had to fucking take a a boat that would take like uh, you know forty days. You know, whatever. Yeah. Now it's like you can go like. Like when I went to went to uh, you know uh, Italy, you know you're there the next day, you know, or exactly. like, you know. So it's like people go like, oh, Italy. I'm like, yeah, it's not that. I mean, from New York, it's six hours. Like yeah, relax, exactly. you know. Yeah. So it's like you could do it. So it's like people just. It's just doing it. Once you get there, then you'll find out, and then it's and that's then it's, that's for sex as well. It's just doing it. You just gotta, just, and, and, you know what? Just yeah, do it. Do Sometimes it. it's six hours. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes it's, you're not doing it right. Sometimes you have to travel to it <laughs> just just to fuck. You know, yeah, nah. Yeah, uh, man. But thank you so much, man. For uh, thank you. Yeah, really thanks, appreciate man. it. It was great, and uh, 
And yeah, um, um, you had the you're gonna be in the LA uh, LA uh, Comic Con December Comic Con three this, four five yeah three four five so check yeah. that out. And is there any uh, social media that you want people to find you or follow you? Uh, or? Instagram and uh, Twitter they're both at Peter Kalamis first okay. name last name. Okay, but, uh, those are the two that I primarily use. I get confused by the other ones. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Nah, we all I'm getting do. old. But there thank you go, you. guys. Follow them, like and subscribe. Keep uh, doing what you guys do out there. Give us comments and stuff as well. Well, uh, you know, fill it up. We're also looking for stories. If you guys got travel stories and stuff that you want to start asking, the, yeah. or we can start asking our guests and stuff, mm -hmm. we're up for that too. Yeah. But Peter Klamis, well, ladies thank you guys. and gentlemen, thanks, man. Thank you. Thank you.